Hey, what's up, everybody? So um, Jamal's in here working on a lot of things. Uh, every time I get into a conversation with this guy, I'm always thinking, why didn't I press record? So let's ambush him. Let's talk a little bit about bad kids. So I know he's wor now working on some more content uh, for us. And look at here. Jamal. Oh. Hey, what's up? So, what's up, my man? Uh, all right. Every time, remember, every time we get into these conversations, I always wish we'd press record. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so here, so here we are. All right. So, just about a few minutes ago, let's put this down for a second. Okay. I'm serious. I'm recording this. So, bad kids. When we first met. Mm. Oh yeah. And we were talking about this innovation class, and then all of a sudden, I remember. When you start, like, you stopped listening to me because you were doing this. You're like, yeah, like, I know that kid. Yeah. Because when I was talking about some of my students and how they succeeded, a lot of them were risk takers. Mm -hmm. A lot of them weren't afraid of this and that. And you were like, yeah. Tell me about your bad kids. I'm using air quotes on bad yeah. kids. Um, <laughs> bad kids. What I what I've learned, uh, just by just by changing the way that I teach it what it really comes down to is engagement and I say that to say that you think these kids are bad and if you're talking about Michael Jackson bad then yeah but if you're talking like horrible in my class bad the only reason kids ever misbehaved in my class is just because they were not engaged in anything right concerning the class as soon as I switch the way I talk and I talk more towards the here, here, here was my here, here was my underlying thought process for the kids at my school. How can your ideas lead to income? Mm -hmm. Ideas to income that that was that was that was it. So how can you make money off of that? How can you make money off of that? Because to them, that was engaging because <laughs> you, right. you're everybody here likes money to get money that's what right. they deliver I'm, what do you do for a living I get money so okay how do you get money right so so they already have that mindset so I just played off of it and what I what I realized is uh, my classroom I was telling somebody the other day I had my students come in and write learning targets like what would like, like I saw like extreme ownership yeah. from from bad kids so much so that people were like when, I, when kids start doing good things and they're like, you teach all the honors kids at the school. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's an honor for me to teach them now that we've invested so much mm -hmm. into them. So just, just, just the shift, the shift in uh, my teaching practice. Like I, I, I started teaching more entrepreneurial in my mind. So I even started a business. You okay, you, see, you just said the M word. You just said the M word. I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bounce off that. When they had a mindset of finding opportunities mm. and not reacting. Because I remember, like, again, I started this off, and sorry to ambush you, but we yeah. were talking about bad kids. And the cruel joke was, especially when I first started, the good kids, the mm -hmm. kids that had the four point whatever GPA, <laughs> they were the ones struggling because they didn't want to get a bad grade. Right. And they were like, you know, the, the bad kids, or I was like, what do you want to work on? They're like, you're serious? I can do what I... And they rolled. They, they, just, they just went with it. While the good kids sat back and, and wanted to make sure that I was, I was okay with it. That mindset is mm -hmm. the one that I'm wanting to foster with my group of kids because they know th when things are right there, take it. Right. Just take it. Because take you're it. important enough. You don't necessarily need accolades and all this. Right. You can just do it. How are you trying to change the mindset with your kids in your school? Right. So, so just let me let me touch on the difference between our kids and and yeah. really their their basic needs, right? Yeah. So, Actually, can I address that real quick? Yeah. Go ahead. So when I first met Jamal, he was excited and he's like, I was doing some professional development in Tampa, and he said, Hey, I want to try these things. You know, I have an innovation class, and I want to try it. And I said, Awesome. But a lot of people say they're going to. Call me in a year, <laughs> and he did. Except he had he collected data. Yeah. You, now you can go. Sorry. Okay. So the 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 data is simple. Over every quarter, at least ninety percent of my kids passed all of their classes. Their attendance was better. They performed at least ten percent better on most exams comparable to all kids. But but that that is a byproduct of a shift in 
teaching like that that wasn't the focus mm-hmm. like you talk about standards the kids understood as a matter of fact we got a chance to go over standards twice <laughs> like two times and i told the kids they were like we really did all that work like yeah we did a lot more work because you guys worked like talk about lesson planning yeah like yeah i would spend a week sometimes like organizing thoughts and how i wanted to attack certain things but when i brought it to the kids and i said hey let's do this together it, it, it elevated but but back to the, the the different needs well students where don is from yep their skill sets are ready to go in most situations all you gotta do is unpop those and mm. man, put them in a the microwave and you got popcorn whereas the kids that i'm dealing with sometimes you gotta go pick the corn out the field yeah you gotta take the kernels off the corn you gotta package it then seal it up, then open it up, and right. then put it in the microwave. So what am I saying? I realized that there was a gap. There was a major gap, and it's full. Let's do genius hour. Like, yeah, let's do it. And it was horrible. And it was, like, horrible. Like, horrible. The kids were like, so what do we do? And, like, they were quiet because they were trying to figure out what it is that we were supposed to do. But so, I think a lot of people do that. Like, a lot of times people say, hey, we're going to do genius hour. Go be geniuses. Right. And then that first year, they're like, well, that sucked. Right, but but I had situations, and I love my kids. And if if you guys see this, y'all y'all know I'm telling the truth. I'm keeping it real, right? Man, we we had kids in there, and we got these nice computers. And I was like, yeah, just make a split screen. They're like, what do you mean make a split screen? I was like, oh man. <laughs> All right, now we're gonna do a lesson on how to make a split screen. But it was a necessary thing. But once they learned how to do it and learned how to do the research, I man, they were like, hey, Mr. Crook, move out the way. Uh, we got this. Uh. What we're doing today, y'all, well, here's what we got going on, dot, 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 the groups. The craziest thing happened. I became an evaluator of yeah. talent. Yeah. So now I can get feedback. And like it wasn't like me just writing a whole bunch of feedback. It was like, okay, so here's what you need to do. And the kids would take their pen and write the feedback down. And then the next day get better. And some sometimes the feedback was like, man, you need to treat people better. Mm-hmm. You need to work on those relationships. Mm-hmm. How are you networking with that group over there? I said, if you don't know how to do this, go talk to her because she can draw. She can do this. Outsource some of the stuff. Yeah. Like really work together. So Yeah, that's true collaboration. Yeah, that's, that's true, true collaboration. Yeah, yeah. So when you start talking about those those simple concepts, the the basic needs, here's the thing. Once once somebody learns how to fish, they can make a fishing pole. Right. Because they understand, well, okay, here's what I need yeah. or here's what I'm thinking. Right. Well, what I would love is that, like, we both discovered this joy, like that whole Seth Godin question, what's the purpose of school? Mm. We'll prepare them for a future. How future ready is it for them to memorize things short term and then just be subservient? 1950. Right. Right. Yes. And so now you're giving students an opportunity for them to be great. Great. And you can still fit it within the curriculum. By the way, this is my selfish moment. This is why we're together. Was started up right like I, i'm personally scared about where education like how fast the rest of the world is moving mm. and then yeah. how fast school and and don't get me wrong there's been some change in education mm. and i'm happy but i don't think it's fast enough no and so when you start doing these things with your students okay just and, and I, i'm gonna try i was gonna try to make this brief but we're just no, wrapping it's, it's gone. tell them tell them about when you're one student and fidget everybody hated fidget spinners all the teachers were oh they're all hot and bothered by it <laughs> just tell them about that story okay so so let me just help you classroom management tip fidget spinners are a thing right culturally relevant teaching you like, how is that culturally relevant because the kids are dealing with it it's something that's part of their lives right so all you have to do with fidget spinners seriously just come up with norms just fidget spinner like here's how you're supposed to use them in my class, don't spin them on the table, don't spin them on your nose, don't spin them on your forehead. You can spin them in one hand or you can switch hands, but this is appropriate use. If you can't use it appropriately, put it away. Classroom management tip of the day. Right. Good to go. But now let's take it to the next level, right? Because what I just did was I gave you level one tips, right? Level one is defining and gathering, right? So we just did that. Let's move it all to level three and level four. Level four being implementation, level three meaning, meaning theory, right? So I'm, I'm sitting down with my kids and we're doing, you can call it a few different things, a guided brainstorming session or a Socratic seminar, right? I call it a Socratic seminar <clears throat> for all intents and purposes, right? So we're doing our Socratic seminar. We're talking about fidget spinning. The kids are upset. They're like, man, they keep taking my fidget spinners. And then a couple kids are like, hmm, I can get those for a dollar. And everybody kind of pauses. 
said, why don't you sell them then? And then one kid was like, well, you can't sell them in school. I was like, looks like we got a good problem. So we have access to dollar fidget spinners yep. and we can't sell them in school. Yep. Opportunities are everywhere, right? Yep. So <laughs> how about one kid was like, we could sell them before and after school. There you go. Off school grounds. I'm a walker. One kid says, I'm a walker. And all of a sudden, they have this <laughs> really lucrative <laughs> fidget spinner business. <clears throat> they sold 50 fidget spinners from Wednesday to Wednesday. On the day of, they came to me and said, uh, I just sold 20. Like in the morning, before before the 9 o'clock bell rang, <clears throat> they got 20 off. They start selling double fidget spinners. Now, this is the last two weeks of school. And here's the thing. Of, here's the thing. So we had another Socratic seminar. And they're like, teachers keep taking my fidget spinners. And the kids who are selling them are just like, <laughs> hmm, <coughs> supply, <laughs> supply, supply and demand. Demand is one, like, demand yes. is one up. That's like, hilarious. Yes. So, so now, at the school, they're getting bum rushed, right? They're walking home and they're like, why I, want my, I want my fidget spinner, right? Uh, with people, there come problems. We had to have a conversation about doing people right and how to sell them yeah. and, you know, That's making awesome. sure you have relationships because, you know, we had a situation. Kid was like, well, they didn't give me a fidget spinner and I gave them the money. And it came to me, I was like, man, you can't do business like that. So we had this deep, high-level conversation. The lesson extended beyond the classroom. Watch this. I didn't tell you guys. Writing was done. Reading was done. Inquiry was done, right? Collaboration and organization. We touched on yeah. five different concepts. You talk about standards, right? I know one of the I was the just going to say, you, these all could have been the, like traditional lessons that you implemented in to fidgets for fidget, fidget spinners. Fidget spinners, right? Like right. real real life lessons, right. like how to, how to capitalize on supply <clears throat> and demand. Like, and I, when I tell you the kids actually did research, like yeah. they did like middle school, like college level I'm researching APA style formatting because we had worked so hard the, the next level was well let's push you to another level of writing so yeah. these are the things that are possible because you will have more time honestly to do more because it you'll free up so much of your own time and you'll become a learner with them so much so to the point man me and my wife started a business right well, and, and then they, your students took interest because you were doing the business, and right. then, so you can obviously see why it's a cycle. Jamal's Jamal, and I'm honored that, that he's joining up with us. Uh, he's in here from Tampa for this week. Uh, we're banging out curriculum, um, and we've also made the decision that uh, we've been getting so much feedback from parents and students mm -hmm. uh, that don't have our class right. in their school. The first of all, we want to work with schools. That's right. kind of our main thing. We work with schools, but now we're starting to reach out to uh, basically the next generation of entrepreneurs and innovators that if they're not getting this uh, training that we want to give it to them and free. And then I might as well tell them about it. We just wrapped up his, yeah. he's got a five part series, especially for kids that are inner city that haven't thought of these concepts yet. Right. Jamal's got a, a great product out there. It will be Good free. For everybody. It'll be up here really soon. Um, and then lastly, yeah, I just uh, want to hear back from you guys. We're basically, and I'm being transparent, yeah. we're building a community, right? We've been dealing so much with teachers and I've been doing professional development. Luckily I've been meeting people like Jamal, yeah. but now, <sighs> We feel like we want to build a bigger community of, of parents, of young entrepreneurs, of old entrepreneurs. We want mm -hmm. to build this tent, right, yeah. of great innovators and entrepreneurs because a lot of the entrepreneurs that we've been meeting, they struggled in school too. They didn't have fidget spinner lessons. Right. So if we start combining, and so if you guys have noticed, I also do a podcast, interview some of these great people, mm -hmm. but we're building, we're, 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 we're community building. And if you want to be a part of the community, we'd love to hear from you. You can always go to startitupinnovation.com. Uh, click the subscribe. Uh, the, well, actually, here on the YouTube channel, you can click subscribe button here. We're just starting off. But we can also you know, get our newsletter, um, whether you're a parent or you just have had it with you know the status quo uh mm -hmm. let us know and we'd like to feature you maybe we, Absolutely. we'd like to have guests because we're um we also just plan this out we're going to be doing weekly uh he lives in tampa i live in annapolis but we're going to be having a weekly show uh where we're going to talk to each other but also have one guest so if right. you know of a guest <laughs> let us know other than that sorry i snuck up on you oh yeah man i can get back to work but man. i mean i figured <laughs> Every time we have these conversations, I wish I press record. So thanks for joining us and we can get back to work. All right.